the session will be taken by Dr. Uh, Krishna Kishore, and his topic is uh, Wire Arc Additive Manufacturing of uh, Inconel 625 Alloy. So before start of uh, uh, his uh, 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 lecture, so let me introduce him. So Dr. Krishna Kishore has uh, completed his B.Tech from uh, Vyas Siddhartha Engineering College, Vijayawada, Andhra Pradesh, and M.Tech from uh, NIT Jamshedpur. He completed his PhD in the area of uh, welding and joining from uh, NIT Warangal. Before joining as assistant professor in uh, SVNIT Surat, he worked as a postdoctoral researcher in the area of uh, machine learning in resistant spot, spot welding at Duangui University, South Korea, and uh, IIT Delhi. He has published a significant number of papers in international journals and conferences. His research interest includes welding and jo joining, wire arc to manufacturing, artificial intelligence and machine learning in manufacturing, and advanced characterization. He received the Production Division uh, Subject Award from um, Institute of Engineers for the year 2021. Currently, he is involved in uh, two international projects as a uh, principal investigator and uh, co-principal investigator funded by DST, Government of India. He has delivered lectures in both international and national platform in various occasions. With this, uh, I request uh, the speaker to carry on with this uh, lecture. Yeah, thank you, uh, J.K. Randhidigaru, uh, for a nice introduction. Uh, today, we will discuss about uh, uh, an interesting process, uh, which these days we are uh, hearing about uh, uh, additive manufacturing continuously. As a welding people, uh, what we can do is, uh, uh, for large-scale additive manufacturing, uh, why are additive manufacturing is become, becoming very famous? Right? If we want to build a component of two meters, let's say, uh, even in the civil engineering people, they're building the big, big uh, houses. So for us, uh, for uh, in the case of our uh, uh, building persons like us, if you want to build a large structure of two meters, three meters, or uh, a turbine blade uh, uh, by deposition of uh, melted, uh, like uh, layers by uh, deposition, uh, depositing the molten metal uh, layer by layer. So we can obviously opt for the wire arcade to manufacturing. So it is a combination of uh, uh, melting of wire, uh, just like we do in the conventional welding, and we are depositing uh, in the layer by layer fashion uh, to get the required component. So we will see uh, these uh, the introduction of this uh, wire arc additive manufacturing uh, in this following contents, and also I will discuss uh, one of our case study which we are doing, and I will uh, also throw at the end some lights uh, what we can do. Uh, uh, some kind of research what we can do in this area. So we also recently started working on this. And uh, as per uh, <coughs> uh, my uh, knowledge, uh, uh, if we go to this uh, UGC website or uh, if you see in the DST website, there is a lot of uh, call for proposals uh, that are coming in the area of additive manufacturing. And, uh, and it is the current trend is towards this one. So if you integrate in industry 4.0 and additive manufacturing, and if you write a proposal, obviously it will click. So we will see, we will discuss these things uh, at the end of, uh, uh, in, the, in, the, in the future work and uh, the subsequent uh, slides. <coughs> so additive manufacturing, if we talk about it is uh, uh, not really new. So from uh, very, very olden days, uh, we can see this kind of uh, process is existing and uh, uh, people are doing a lot of uh, even in the lot of museums we can see a lot of components which are manufactured uh, that are existing uh, uh, till date uh, that are manufactured with the additive manufacturing uh, technique only and if you see as per the definition uh, of of ASTM standard what is additive manufacturing people are calling so it is also actually a joining of materials uh, uh, by layer by layer actually we are depositing one layer and we are joining that layer with the another layer that is deposited on the top so uh, compared to the subtractive manufacturing process actually we are doing we are adding the layer by layer so we are uh, so it is uh, termed as additive manufacturing right so if you are removing some material uh, just like in the machining to get the final component so these these kind of processes are treated as a subtractive manufacturing process 
and the uh, the stages are very simple if you want to manufacture some component design the cad file of it slice it and uh, convert into the stl file slice it and the deposit uh, layer by layer using the cam uh, integrated machine so these are the simple steps that uh, generally we follow and uh, if we want to uh, as per the standard if we want to actually call uh, it as an additively manufactured product so these are the actually five criteria that it has to fulfill so one is the layers has to be joined together uh, after deposition like if you are depositing layer by layer and these two layers has to be fused to the, fused together and they should have uh, the bonding and uh, it should start from the 3d model data and uh, it's a layer by layer approach and uh, it is not a subtractive manufacturing okay these criteria has to be fulfilled if in order to have to uh, classify this as a additively manufactured component and what is wire arc additive manufacturing we are uh, our, our interest is on wire arc additive manufacturing so there is a uh, deposition that is happening so for this deposition happening so there there should be something that is melting so for this melting of this wire we are using uh, uh, arc as a heat source heat source to melt this wire and this uh, molten droplets will be deposited on the substrate and we are uh, integrating with the cam software such that it will be moving in a layer by layer fashion required uh, for our required component so if you see uh, there are different additive manufacturing process and uh, we will uh, we will see where this wire arc additive manufacturing falls actually so there are uh, the, uh, the pro there are different processes uh, as per the standards so we can classify all the additive manufacturing processes into these six categories like direct energy deposition powder bed fusion binder jetting material extrusion material letters or uh, sorry material uh, jetting and the vat polymerization and uh, the wire arc additive manufacturing actually falls under the category of direct energy deposition so in the direct energy deposition we will come uh, little bit later i will explain in detail about wire uh, direct energy deposition and also wire activity manufacturing so uh, in the direct energy deposition uh, it can be either uh, uh, we can feed the powder or we can feed the wire so the feed stock is either the powder or the wire so and if this powder or wire is been melted with it can be melted with different sources right it can be melted with the wire, laser based sources or it can be uh, melted with electron based sources and it can be melted uh, with the base of arc and our interest is on wire arc additive manufacturing so we are melting this wire with respect to the arc based heat source and what are some conventional arc based heat source we know that is like mig welding gmaw tig welding gtaw and the most advanced version of uh, mig welding is the cold metal transfer and people are also using the plasma arc welding so these are some of the uh, key uh, we can say the typical deposition rates we can achieve uh, which are mentioned here in the gmaw in the case of mig welding we can achieve 1 to 2 kg per hour typical deposition rates and also we can achieve in the tig welding 3 to 4 kg per hour and in the cold metal transfer we can achieve 2 to 3 kg per hour and in the plasma arc welding we can achieve 2 to 4 kg per hour so if we see uh, almost uh, all the uh, processes we can uh, in all the heat sources we can able to achieve minimum 1 kg per hour deposition but there are several uh, advantages and disadvantages with different different uh, heat sources and mostly in the case of industries people are quite preferring either the cold metal transfer or uh, the case of plasma arc welding where uh, the spatter is very very less so we will see why the spatter is less in the subsequent slides and we will see uh, what happens if the heat input is very very high and how the growth of the grain size will be now as i said uh, it is under coming under the category of direct energy deposition so direct energy deposition is also a little bit uh, older process it is uh, developed at, uh, developed at uh, uh, sandia national laboratories in 1995 uh, if you see on the right hand side So there is a laser coming out and uh, the powder is fed coaxially actually. The powder is fed coaxially towards the laser uh, beam and uh, this uh, actually uh, when these particles are hitting this laser beam actually they are melting and getting deposited. And this process you can see how quick it is and uh, how much uh, 
uh, faster rate we can actually deposit the uh, molten droplet. So this uh, this has gained a lot of importance uh, in the manufacturing industry because if we want to manufacture some product and if it is taking larger lead times, so people will not be quite interested in these kind of processes. So obviously, if you are manufacturing some component and industry will be more and more uh, interested towards this kind of uh, development of this process uh, and the utilization of this process, only if the production rates are very, very high. So, and also uh, the initial uh, cost is uh, actually quite high, but if you calculate uh, for uh, different components uh, which are manufactured annually, so the cost, it is like uh, treated as cost effective process. However, uh, there are quite challenges uh, in this uh, direct energy deposition process as well. We have to use the powders very, very fine. And uh, uh, actually, uh, for manufacturing of single component, it is very costly. So it is not like, uh, so if, if you want to uh, manufacture a, uh, uh, in bulk, this process is al always suggested. But if you want to manufacture in single components, we will see some applications in the end. But it is not quite advisable. So there uh, actually has a uh, gap. So people have uh, quite thought of uh, uh, developing some process which is quite cheaper and also uh, which can achieve uh, much higher deposition rate. And also one more disadvantage is uh, the bed size. The bed size in the direct energy deposition depends on the capacity of the machine and uh, the component size is restricted by this bed only. So the component size which we are achieving in the direct energy deposition process is entirely dependent on the machine which we are having. And in the case of uh, wire additive manufacturing, people have actually uh, developed this process to break this uh, uh, limitation of the size. So when we are talking about large scale additive manufacturing, so it is more than one meter components. So when we are talking about more than one meter components to be deposited, so wire additive manufacturing has played a key role. And uh, if you see in the current uh, industries, uh, may not be in the India, but in the UK, if you see in the Cranfield University and other university, they are developing quite good applications with the case of, with the help of this VAM process. <coughs> and uh, uh, as I said uh, in the earlier case, uh, we can achieve a deposition rates uh, in the case of uh, DED process like uh, uh, one to two kgs per hour. Also here, if we actually play with the parameters, we can achieve one to 10 kg per hour as well. There are so many components that are developed. I will uh, uh, discuss these things in the uh, application stage. Uh, the main advantages of this uh, uh, BAM process is higher deposition rates, low material cost. That is, if we are getting the powder, the powder cost is very, very high compared to the wire. So uh, manufacturing of the wire is uh, quite cheaper. So the feedstock material cost is getting reduced drastically. So we will see an application or we will see a case study where we are comparing the inconel wire with the inconel powder. So if it is uh, 9,000 uh, 9, per kg and we are getting here at 1,200, 1,300 per kg. So there is a quite uh, good uh, uh, reduction in the cost in respect to the feedstock material as well. Now, uh, people are quite using this cold metal transfer. Uh, actually, if you see, uh, it is a modified MIG welding only. It is a modified MIG welding process uh, where uh, we are actually controlling the electrode. So we are actually uh, oscillating the electrode. Uh, we are actually moving the electrode up and down uh, with respect to some frequency. And once the short circuit is happening, uh, the electrode starts melting. and immediately the power will be off and the wire will be reversed back. So once the wire is getting backward, the droplet which is actually formed because of this short circuiting, it will be uh, getting detached due to the gravity and it will be transferred to the substrate. Once again, uh, after this process is happening, this electrode will come back and it, it, it will again uh, maintain certain gap and uh, it will generate the short circuiting and again this kind of uh, heating of this electrode will be happening, droplet detached, droplet will be forming. And once the uh, electrode is moved, uh, taken back due to the gravity, this entire droplet will be getting detached and it will be transferred. So 
because of switching of the current in between the transfer of the droplet actually it is actually treated as cold metal transfer but when we check the temperatures at the uh, uh, droplet uh, temperature of the droplet it is actually uh, quite high but when compared with the mig welding or tig welding process it is comparatively relatively cold so that's that's why the name uh, the cold metal transfer came in this fashion so there are different variants in the cold metal transfer as well like in the case of mig welding we can use different pulses we can use advanced pulses dynamic pulses by combining different uh, combination of pulses and also we are having cmt advanced so these will actually uh, alter the microstructure if we are if you are using some kind of pulses actually it will uh, 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 it will actually transfer different modes so uh, if you know in the mig welding there are different transfer modes where we are getting globular transfer where we are getting the spray transfer mode so it depends on we are controlling the size of the droplet by using different variants of the process and also in the vam process actually integration of the cam software is one thing but here we will not be doing much kind of slicing right so we will be doing the path planning so different path planning is very very important in the case of uh, vam process so the integration of cam software with our robotic arm or with our cnc head uh, there are different path that has to be achieved has to be given and this path planning or path control is very very essential in the case of vam process so these are some uh, 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 path planning strategies for uh, making different uh, uh, components in different uh, uh, shapes now as we all know this thing if you want to improve uh, further the actually uh, one draw two drawbacks that this vam process is having before we discuss the quality improvement actually uh, if we deposit one layer over the substrate uh, it is entirely absorbing the heat the substrate layer and uh, let's assume we are depositing the another layer on the top of the first layer second layer we are depositing and this heat that is absorbed by the first layer and the substrate plate let's assume the third layer is deposited it been but because of this conduction transfer it is absorbed by layer 2 layer 1 and the substrate so we are keep on depositing and the layers uh, which are deposited on the top is spreading the heat towards the bottom and uh, this bottom microstructure is like little bit coarser grain uh, and we can say uh, the columnar growth or we can say simply the anisotropic property from the bottom to the top so the property from the bottom to the top of the deposition is quite different to, to control this uh, or to, uh, to uh, normalize this we will do generally the post heat treatment process and also we will uh, have some strategies like interpass cooling that means we will deposit a layer and we will hold for some time so that it will reduce the temperature to certain temperature interpass temperature depending on the material and again we will deposit the other layer right so if we are not able to um, allow it to cool for some time people are using different uh, gases in the addition so they will play some uh, uh, gases in between and uh, they will allow to cool it faster so people are also doing interpass rolling uh, uh, like hot forging or cold forging they will uh, deposit one layer they will allow the roller to pass onto it they will compress the layer again they will deposit another layer so these kind of strategies can be used for the improvement of the quality the other thing uh, the one drawback is this one the other uh, anisotropic properties from the bottom to the top the other uh, defect uh, uh, the other uh, disadvantage of this process is the distortion right so when we are talking about the depositions continuously if we see if i am depositing uh, even in our lab we have observed if we deposit like 120 layers continuously and after uh, cooling we can say there is a bend there is some distortion in the shape so if you are expecting a straight uh, deposited sample and we can see little bit curvature at ends so these kind of uh, distortions are been there and this distortions is because of the residual stresses and these residual stresses can also be controlled by the post heat treatment or maintaining some interpass cooling or if we are continuously doing this interpass rolling right. so these are some uh, uh, quality improvement strategies in the case of vam process 
so uh, as a as i discussed these are some uh, 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 pictures which represent uh, these uh, uh, modification of these things so this is uh, for the case of uh, mic torch and uh, there is a subsequent roller coming out and this roller will compress this uh, layer after this deposition continuously right and there is a uh, preheat uh, like uh, you, if you can see there is a gas nozzle here and uh, once the layer is deposited this gas is allowed to cool this layer and uh, it will bring back to the required temperature and also we can also heat the layer uh, continuously to actually uh, provide the additional heating to the layer so that it will uh, um, have the same uniform uh, microstructure from the top to the bottom or bottom to the top so there are several benefits uh, which we will uh, see uh, once we see some case studies like uh, we can have uh, the major advantage is uh, producing the larger components larger larger size components even though it is reduced like it is uh, uh, having quite surface roughness uh, we can say uh, if we control the process parameters we can achieve uh, a good uh, uh, good surface uh, finish and also good structural integrity we can have and the reduce uh, we can also have uh, these components manufactured which we have seen in the earlier video also uh, the lead times are very very less right so these are the simple examples uh, in the amsterdam if you see uh, uh, this is a 3d printed uh, steel bridge in the amsterdam amsterdam like uh, the 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 actual entire structure has been built with uh, this mx 3d machine and there are some 3D printed hooks. So you, you can assume that uh, the, the average size of, uh, you can imagine the average size of this uh, bridge and how this uh, uh, entire structure has been manufactured on a simple machine, right? And also the uh, 3D printed crane hooks we can see, um, which have been actually manufactured. And this is another example of the titanium tank which has been manufactured uh, using the wire rod pdt manufacturing uh, uh, <clears throat> and uh, this commercial uh, titanium tank uh, is for the uh, space applications however as i discussed there are some challenges like residual stresses uh, deformation or porosity uh, in the case of some uh, alloys and crack de uh, delamination when the porosity is there and stress residual stresses are there obviously there will be some cracks and uh, delamination that is happening and uh, in the case of VAM, vam processes one important thing is the surface finish so post finishing is obviously required for the case of vam process and actually we are depositing layer by layer and at the end to maintain the aesthetic look of this component we will be doing some kind of surface finishing operations so in order to control these things, there are a lot of research is going on in this direction and people are quite developing these pulses and different path planning strategies uh, and uh, to control this kind of uh, surface finish effects. There is a staircase effect, we will see this one and uh, humping and overhang effects are also there in the case of uh, VAM products. So if you see, uh, if you assume that the layers are deposited uh, continuously over one layer over other layer so you can see the depositions are like this this is the humping effect right so this humping effect might be there and there might be some kind of staircase effect like this so one layer deposited the other layer is deposited there will be some uh, uh, staircase kind of thing like geometry might be like this so this is because of the heat input towards one direction and the heat input uh, uh, transfer it towards the one direction and the moment of this droplet so once the droplet is having some viscosity to uh, once the droplet is transferred to the substrate so this droplet will be moving towards the uh, because of the viscous property viscosity property of this uh, molten droplet it will uh, the flowability of the droplet it will move towards the uh, larger uh, area right it will spread actually it will spread so because of this spreading actually this kind of stair case effect is also there so to avoid these things there are many parameters to be controlled uh, and there are many additional uh, 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 we can say uh, uh, additional elements we have to consider like uh, rolling or some uh, additional cooling with the help of the gases right 
now these are some of the applications uh, uh, in different sectors um, we have done uh, 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 some analysis uh, in the case of uh, uh, inconel 625 where uh, um, we have written one uh, collaborative project with respect to uh, drdo and nr uh, um, naval research board with some naval application which i cannot uh, uh, show the picture but i will discuss in detail uh, <clears throat> so this inconel alloy uh, is been quietly used uh, in the case of defense and naval applications uh, there uh, actually uh, there is a quite good number of research already happened in this area but still there is some interesting factors which we will be uh, seeing uh, still there is a, a challenge to achieve a uniform uh, microstructure and also uh, there is a quite good challenge to avoid this kind of staircase effect in the case of uh, vam of uh, inconel 625 alloy and people have done uh, this uh, uh, inconel 625 depositions quite uh, uh, for very quite good good number of applications and the mostly if we as per our uh, survey uh, with the existing literature we we have observed that most of the people are preferring this cold metal transfer and uh, one good advantage of the cold metal transfer is the pulsing conditions the pulsing which we can control is quite high right so as i said there are four different variants in the cold, cold metal transfer like uh, uh, cmt pulse cmt dual pulse and cmt advance and so on right so these kind of pulses actually controlling the droplet size the droplet size uh, in the normal case in the mig welding if we deposit one size and we will occupy 2 mm and if we go for the cmt advance we will go for the 0.8 mm so this actually reduces the amount of the surface roughness that is getting deposited on the walls right so we have done uh, some uh, good number of uh, uh, analysis of these papers and uh, we have identified some uh, uh, challenges in this one and our our uh, uh, work is little bit uh, towards the deposition pattern and we have uh, studied how the deposition pattern is uh, working on the microstructural and mechanical properties of this inconel depositions right and these are some uh, experimental uh, plans like uh, uh, the current conditions which we have used voltage wire feed rate traverse speed everything actually uh, if we have a thorough literature and uh, if we go with the range and we have done some number of trails in order to see whether the beads are been uh, good or not and uh, based on that these actually the parameters have been optimized and these been parameters has been finalized and this is a simple experimental setup that we have used on the uh, cnc head we have attached this uh, c uh, um, we can say the cold metal transfer uh, elect, uh, head electrode head or cmt torch head and it has been deposited on the uh, simple conventional cnc milling machine all right so uh, the movement of the torch is been controlled by the cnc programming and uh, uh, it is simple programming to go straight and coming backward but uh, later on we have uh, developed some uh, codes to actually move in the weaving bead and other beads right so once the uh, uh, if you can see here uh, uh, this is an entire deposition actually if you see the width of this uh, deposition is like uh, uh, 3 to 4 mm and this 3 to 4 mm actually we have achieved like this and this deposition not happened in a single layer and this deposition happened in this weaving bead so zigzag strategy we have used to deposit so to achieve this this much of width we have actually traversed uh, like uh, uh, have uh, given the path planning for uh, the torch moment in this direction right so it will be going in this zigzag pattern and it will be depositing the uh, molten metal and actually once it is deposited we will allow to cool up to uh, 70 degrees centigrade and we will again deposit the next layer so like that we have deposited some around um, uh, some uh, uh, some layers uh, which uh, will read uh, which will have actually the thickness of uh, height of this one is like 130 mm and uh, the length is up to uh, like 100 mm 
So we have deposited in these kind of strategies with a dwell period of uh, 20 seconds. And uh, uh, within this 20 seconds, actually, we have given a lot of uh, uh, gases inflow so that uh, it will be cooling this uh, entire uh, deposited layer. And it will reach around 60 to 70 degree or approximately 50 degree so that it will be having a dimensional stability, one thing. And the growth of the microstructure is immediately controlled so that it will be having a uniform, at least mostly uniform properties from the bottom to the top. Obviously, once we done this kind of uh, different uh, depositions, and these depositions we have done in uh, at least uh, uh, for different different uh, case uh, cases, like uh, the weaving bead, uh, we have altered in different directions, right? And we have done uh, in the alternate directions. Uh, one layer will be deposited like this. The other layer will be deposited from the back. And in the other case, we have deposited parallelly. So this parallel bead uh, depositions and everything has been characterized in the later stage. And uh, so uh, actually in the case of uh, VAM, uh, we can say, as I said, in the anisotropic properties. So to evaluate this kind of anisotropic properties, people actually will use this kind of uh, extraction of the samples in 0 degree, 45 degree, and 90 degree, right? And these samples uh, are as per the standards of the uh, ASTM we have taken, or uh, uh, and these kind of samples are being tested uh, with respect to tensile and microstructure. Uh, we have characterized these things and uh, studied the microstructure for the uh, me mechanical and microstructure properties. So if you see, so these are the some of the properties that are shown for the 0 degree, 45 degree, and 90 degree. and uh, you you might see in the case of zero degree deposit like uh, samples the yield strength or uh, the maximum uh, UTS is quite high compared to the other uh, cases. But because of our deposition strategies and the deposition control uh, controlled deposition uh, cooling uh, controlled cooling rates, so we can see in the zero degree uh, it's about. Uh, like uh, 310 megapascal and in the 45 degrees it is about 290 megapascal and it is in the 90 degrees is a, it's almost about to 270 megapascal and it's almost quite matching but still we need to achieve uh, a good equal number of properties and we are having a different uh, uh, microstructural changes even though we are, i'm saying that uh, the yield strength is nearby uh, with uh, plus or minus uh, 20 percent error but the microstructural property, if you see, it is quite uh, deviating. And these are some uh, tensile sample uh, uh, drawings which I want to show. And these are, uh, yeah, this is like uh, uh, we have calculated the percentage of area, UTS, yield strength, these things. And for the micro uh, structures, uh, uh, these samples are generally etched with this uh, 15 ml HCL. Uh, this uh, like uh, agent, the combination of this agent, and uh, these samples are extracted in the, the entire uh, layers we have extracted at the middle, top, and bottom. And this microstructure has been thoroughly studied. So, this is our strategy. So, it is one uh, complete depositions, let's say, uh, for easy uh, analysis. We have taken, uh, we have divided this entire um, uh, height of this. Uh, deposition or height of this uh, uh, structure into three zones like uh, top middle and bottom and at different uh, regions we have taken we have considered it, uh, different layers actually the dots represents one layer number so layer number one layer number two something like that so we have divided into equal number of uh, layers and uh, uh, these layers are selected in such a way that we can uh, actually assess the growth of layer one let's say layer 3 to layer 9 and layer 27 like that so if you see at the interface uh, the interface uh, is also actually uh, the substrate plate which we have taken is also inconel so the base inconel uh, microstructure if you see it is like this somewhere like this and once it is melted and deposition deposited so because of the instant grabbing of the heat by this uh, substrate plate we can say there is a dendritic growth in the case of uh, first layer and in the case of uh, uh, the second and third layers we can see there is a controlled fine cellular structure or equi axial uh, structures in the microstructure 
that means still there is a need to achieve uh, the uh, base uh, interface layer like uh, in the interface layer we are not able to achieve this fine cellular structure so that means in the real application we have to slice some few layers and then the actual component can be used uh, or we can say that some layers will not have the similar properties when compared with the entire structure so these layers will be generally machined off and in the in the case of uh, uh, middle uh, if you see uh, the cellular dendrites are actually forming the cellular dendrites are actually forming because of the continuous depositions of the heat and uh, in the subsequent slides i will explain how the heat will be like conducted the heat of this layer will be conducted to the subsequent layers and uh, these subsequent layers will absorb the heat and uh, we can also actually calculate the heat uh, by different uh, process conditions which we have used for depositing this layer and we can actually uh, try to find out at this particular temperature how the material has been reacting and this is the case of uh, uh, the middle layers and in the top layers we can see the little bit elongated or uh, primary dendrite uh, structures can be obtained so <clears throat> still there is a need or there is a, a scope for uh, having different kind of pulses which can be included in order to control this kind of microstructures so this is simple uh, representation to show from the substrate the cellular dendrites or uh, cellular structure and the cellular dendrites and dendrites with uh, secondary arms are been actually forming and this is a simple micro hardness analysis although uh, there is a quite uh, uh, like uh, uh, variation in the middle and we can actually achieve the good hardness at the end of the region because of uh, rapid cooling at the so, rapid cooling of the layers by the surrounding temperature as well as the arrangement which we have made with the help of the gases so these are micro hardness plots micro hardness impressions that i want to show um, and the other case study which we have seen uh, let me see the time if we are having the time i will discuss this one yeah uh, the other case study which we have done is the uh, comparing the uh, microstructure in the case of weaving bead deposition uh, this is one case where we are depositing the layer in this uh, quiet fashion to achieve the wider deposition so why we are going with the weaving is to achieve the wider deposition in one go so we can actually have a strategy of this weaving bead and uh, the same can be achieved if we want to have a component of this much width let's say i want 5 mm width uh, i can also achieve in this fashion so parallel depositions so this is called the parallel deposition method and this is called the weaving bead deposition method and uh, people have tried many number of things uh, this weaving bead can be changed for one layer it will come like this the other layer it will go in the opposite direction so here also in the case of uh, one layer multi pass uh, depositions so one layer can come like this the other layer can go like this and based on our uh, literature analysis and uh, based on our uh, uh, number of trails we have actually controlled um, we have actually uh, finalized these kind of deposition strategies uh, for achieving wider depositions now these are some parameters as i said this is for the case of uh, uh, inconel 6 to 5 uh, we have used the shielding gas of argon 93% and it's uh, combined with some kind of uh, hydrogen uh, and we are actually uh, allowing uh, this shielding gas to uh, cool the interlayer uh, or to cool the layers uh, in between the in, uh, in between the depositions so interpass cooling so it is like 25 liters per minute so we are allowing the gas to flow and it will actually absorb the heat from the layer and it will maintain the temperature uh, up to the 60 or 70 degree in the in our case sometimes we maintain from 50 to 80 degrees centigrade so the base material uh, for the second case we have used is uh, ss400 like substrate plate which i am talking about and we have uh, varied uh, different conditions uh, with respect to study uh, will there be any uh, uh, condition very uh, like uh, uh, welding condition variations and all i will be showing uh, the result of uh, the best one uh, and also we have uh, we can also calculate the heat input actually with some uh, basic equations uh, with, with these all parameters we can also calculate the heat input that we are actually giving to the samples so if you see uh, like uh, uh, 1 0.7 uh, and 2.1 
so this is the uh, idea of actually varying the heat input whether the heat input will affect the layer uh, <coughs> uh, the microstructure at in, in in middle layers and also in the top layers now this is the case for uh, as i said uh, for the case of uh, weaving bead and uh, uh, parallel depositions uh, in the case of uh, yeah in the case of this uh, weaving bead uh, if you see uh, let us say that i have taken these uh, two uh, subsequent layers microstructure or two subsequent layers microstructure for this specimen number 1 uh, which is like a weaving bead so if you if you remember the figure this is the first one is the weaving bead and the second one is the uh parallel depositions uh let's say this uh, somewhere uh, this is layer 22 and uh, layer 21 so the interface can be like this the interface can be like this and the heat can be conducted from uh, this p22 to p21 right so the heat is conducting suppose the deposition let's say the deposition is somewhere like this and the heat will be conducted uh, at different locations and these microstructures because of this heat conduction this microstructures at uh, different uh, entire p21 uh, layer will be different so here the microstructure can be something uh, different and here the microstructure can be the grain size of the uh, this particular layer uh, at this region might be different so if you see in the next figure uh, we have taken a uh, different layers let's say this this is for the case of parallel deposition uh, this is the case of for the parallel deposition in the specimen number 2 so if you see uh, Uh, the layers are continuously deposited uh, with uh, different numbers and we have assigned numbers for each uh, layer let's say 67 68 69 70 71 72 uh, we have deposited like this so first layer will be deposited second layer third layer and on the top of the first uh, layer again the fourth layer will be deposited like that so in the parallel deposition case so the heat in this case will be conducted from p72 67 actually so after deposition of this layer this layer will be uh, deposited subsequently in the later stage right so once this layer is uh, uh, been deposited 67 and once we are depositing the 68 so the 68 layer will conduct the heat to the 67 and also it will conduct the heat uh, it will absorb the heat from the 71 layer like that so this actually uh, the parallel deposition is actually uh, we can say the parallel deposition with the help of this parallel deposition we can actually achieve the preheating what we are doing the preheating so the because of this preheating if if you can see uh, although there is a cellular uh, dendrites that are there but the cellular dendrites are almost uh, we can say uniform in the case of uh, right hand side and also in the case of left hand side that is not actually we are able to achieve in the case of weaving nature so the weaving uh, weaving bead actually uh, actually giving a microstructure which is a uh, quite different at uh, the layers on the left on the layers on the right the layer on the uh, right the right side of the layer right this is what i want to do uh, like i want to say about our uh, work and we will discuss uh, what are some uh, uh, interesting uh, feature work which we are planning uh, we are actually uh, manufacturing in house uh, table movement um, uh, for actually uh, achieving uh, better weaving nature so if, at, right, right now we are actually control, like uh, attaching this one with the case of cnc milling machine and uh, in the case of cnc milling machine there is another uh, pro, pro, like uh, drawback is the restriction of the uh, movement of the head restriction of the movement of the head and we cannot achieve the quite uh, uh, <coughs> required movement in in the case of mm if you want to achieve a little bit curvature it is quite difficult right so for this purpose actually we are designing one uh,
Uh, dear participants, uh, please be online. It seems um, uh, some technical difficulty at the uh, resource bar. Uh, Krishna Kishore, sir, you are on mute. Yeah, I'm sorry for the uh, connection dis disconnected. Yeah, it's okay, sir. I understand. So I've not checked the power of the battery. <laughs> so <laughs> it's okay, sir. So uh, uh, let me show you that uh, one system which we are designing. Um, yeah, I'm not having this one. Uh, let me open um, the slides. I hope the screen is visible again. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ah, thank you. Thank you. So, uh, uh, for actually achieving uh, uh, these kind of uh, uh, XYZ movements, uh, um, we are actually manufacturing in house with uh, leads uh, like uh, ball screws. Uh, one, one, one component which we are uh, manufacturing uh, the automatic table uh, in uh, for the case of achieving XYZ movements. Uh, the other one is uh, the parallel uh, kinematic machine where uh, there will be two arms actually will be holding the torch and uh, these arms will be moving around to produce some some, some kind of circular components so uh, if you if you if you if you if you are interested i can share some a few uh, uh, literature articles in the later stage with the coordinators so where uh, this uh, uh, bin has been used by different researchers for actually doing some kind of uh, machining operations for manufacturing different kind of uh, spherical objects so so these kind of parallel uh, kinematic chain arms can also be used for our deposition uh, for controlling our deposition strategies and also for our vam application and uh, we will uh, try to uh, integrate uh, this automatic uh, uh, the uh, the table uh, with the help of our uh, mig machine or the cmt machine and we will try to do some of our some of our trials which we have already uh, performed in collaboration with some uh, naval research board uh, uh, earlier and we will try to develop the same kind of facility in our in house so this is our actually future activities and obviously once we deposit something and uh, we will obviously characterize these things right so these are some references i will share the anyway i will share the presentation with you so you can have uh, a detailed view of these uh, um, <coughs> references and you can if you want some more uh, details you can obviously contact me and if you see the challenges uh, uh, these, these are some of the references related to our work which we have considered for different parameters optimization right so if you see the quite challenges that we are actually facing and uh, in which we can write different proposals uh, for the case of uh, large scale ad2 manufacturing calls so there are uh, different things uh, which we can consider for uh, for the case of uh, uh, filling the research gap. One is like symmetrical shape building. So if you want to achieve the symmetrical shape building, so as I said, so if you are depositing one layer and assume that in the middle the component is a circular shape, and if you see one is a semicircle on the left, on the some some semicircle on the right. So if you see the symmetrical shape building, the the one if we divide this component into two halves and the one on the left is having a quite uh, different microstructure and the one on the right is having a different quite microstructure in in terms of ductility if we talk in the easy terms if we talk in the ductility one might be having a little lower ductility compared to the uh, other layers right so people are uh, con uh, continuously working in in the case of symmetrical shape building and also back to back uh, shape building uh, applications where <coughs> the ductility or 
the control of the uh, grain size or the control of the grain growth is very very challenging so uh, if we if we can uh, identify some uh, uh, pulsing techniques or some deposition strategies where uh, the deposited layer can be uh, taken half and uh, in the next half uh, it will be cooled the deposited layer will be cooled and when this deposition cooling is happening the subsequent layer on the other symmetrical uh, direction will be deposited so people are actually quite uh, interested to develop some uh, different uh, path strategies for the case of symmetrical shape building and also back to back shape building now uh, people are also interested uh, even whatever the cooling which we are doing with the interpass it is also uh, good to achieve good high number of uh, prop, like uh, let achieve the uh, finer microstructure at the layers so if you want to achieve the finer microstructure obviously one thing which we can do is the cold working at the inter layers right so one one such process which exists is like we are doing uh, depositing a layer we are allowing the roller to pass towards uh, pass on the layer and uh, this will be compressed the layer will be compressed and the microstructure is actually controlled so there are different strategies people are also using where <clears throat> they will actually do some kind of uh, uh, compressions of the layer from the side and also from the top right so there will be some kind of uh, device where it will compress the layers from the side and also from the top and it will actually uh, do some kind of uh, uh, we can say it is like compacting compacting so one is the roller the other one is the compacting people are using and still there is a scope to develop some kind of cold working method methoding met uh, methods for actually controlling the grain structure uh, uh, of the inter interlayers right different layers deposited and uh, <clears throat> as i said so these are uh, these are the conventional uh, challenge like uh, residual stresses in the deposited layer is one conventional challenge because of which these kind of uh, 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 we can say if you are continuously depositing like this on one direction let us assume like i am depositing continuously like this in one direction so in the x axis in the right hand direction i am depositing and if you see after 10 10 layers uh, at the end there might be some kind of curvature like this there might be some kind of curvature that is happening at the end so this is because of the uh, viscous viscosity uh, pro viscous properties of this uh, uh, flowability property of this molten droplet and it will actually uh, gradually because of the heat input that is having uh, at the end uh, at the uh, below layers so it will actually fall down so instead of having a structure at the end the corners will be having at the right right side corners will be actually flowing like this so to control these things actually again the deposition patterns are been used or some kind of uh, additional elements will be sticked at these layers initially and there will be uh, they will be slicing these layers in the later stages so this is one area where you can uh, explore uh, and also can uh, write different proposals in this area the other one is the part orientation or optimization so in the beginning slides i have shown if i if i am having a component uh, with the help of this part strategy we can achieve this one so people are developing this path strategies in order to minimize the number of uh, uh, machining operations in the subsequent stages so machining operation is uh, quite obvious for the case of vam processes uh, vam vam based products and in order to reduce the number of uh, machining operations uh, over the entire part geometry so people will actually uh, people are working towards the path optimization and also path strategies where it is also one of the quite uh, challenging area which people can continuously work on and the heat treatment cycles and the deposition control is the other different uh, area which is uh, uh, quite uh, open uh, for the <coughs> proposals right so uh, one thing i can uh, uh, say uh, with the help of uh, uh, this uh, different challenges uh, a quite good number of proposals can be written in these areas and uh, in the coming years like uh, 2023 2024 we can uh, actually get the funding in this uh, related challenges if we can address with a different uh, orientation of the uh <clears throat> approach or different approach to achieve uh, to overcome these kind of challenges right so these are some applications actually here if you see the case of uh, 
the why uh, for the steel it is like 180 to uh, uh, 180 rupees uh, to uh, 1300 rupees per kg if you are going for the same uh, with the help of the wires we can actually we have to actually pay some 5000 to 8000 rupees per kg similarly if we go for the titanium it is like uh, 9000 to 22000 per kg and if you go for the same we have to pay up to 68000 per the powder so the process is quite uh, the feed stock material is quite cheaper in the case of the vam process and integrate uh, integrate this vam process to control some parameters integrated parameters as we have discussed in the uh, last session like uh, controlling the uh, or monitoring the defects or monitoring the grain growth online so we have to actually integrate some kind of monitoring system to control the welding current voltage shielding gas flow rate wire feed rate so there are so many parameters we can use different sensors to control this one and we are also working on this uh, development once uh, it is done we will be able to achieve uh, some kind of uh, uh, good progress in this direction and uh, uh, i can say uh, in this in this area we have written at least uh, two to three projects so we are hoping that at least one or two will be uh, sanctioned and we will be having a, a good facility that is developed in the coming years so with this i will uh, 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 stop here and uh, i am happy to answer your questions any questions please okay uh, sir i have a question uh, yeah. so how are you addressing this uh, uh, cooling things uh, we all know it's a big challenge as right? it is a metal hmm. uh, so it definitely takes some time for uh, uh, cooling it right when you are continuously um, um, putting the new layer on top of the existing layer yes yes so, so how uh, are you addressing that cooling sir can you because yes, yes. it's cooling I, I, is very critical right yes yes correct so actually one thing is uh, we are using additional uh, shielding gases so like uh, in the case of uh, uh, inconel uh, if we add 7 percentage of hydrogen uh, to the argon like uh, 90 uh, like 7 percentage of hydrogen uh, uh, to this uh, mixture like uh, we are using a mixed shielding gas and we are allowing this shielding gas to flow at a rate of 25 liters per minute on the layer once the layer is uh, once the droplet is detached and uh, after a period of like uh, 10 15 seconds the shielding gas will be flown on this one at a rate of 25 liters per minute so it will actually absorb the heat once the entire layer is deposited and it will allow it will be allowed for 20 30 seconds like that so dwell period is there so it will absorb the content like heat and also the substrate plates will also absor uh, absorb some heat so like that we are actually achieving but still there are quite challenges in this area yeah are you trying to do the same with the, any other materials sir? now we have done about the uh, inconel right yeah we are continuously working on uh, three materials like uh, inconel uh, steel and aluminum alloys aluminum in the aluminum case we are uh, only working on the four series right now but uh, we are exploring uh, exploring different uh, steels Two, two to three variants of the steels we are exploring. Um, in future, I, I, I feel like we will discuss, uh, we will have another uh, good discussion uh, of our results in these areas. Yeah, sure. sure, sure. And uh, one question came in the chat box. So it's given by yeah. Dr. K. Uh, Kalyani Radha. And she's asking that uh, with this method, is this the, a branch of application of uh, DED technology? Yes, yes, it is. Uh, it is coming under the DED process only. Uh, instead of the feedstock as a powder, we are using the feedstock as a wire. So in the UGC, actually, uh, uh, we can refer this one. Uh, there is a national strategy on additive manufacturing uh, as a part of uh, Ajadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav. Um, you can uh, actually go through this NX01, where uh, uh, different <coughs> Uh, different uh, uh, challenges uh, and uh, different uh, like vision we can say vision of uh, the current uh, um, <coughs> uh, digital manufacturing has been actually given in a clear way so I, I suggest all of the participants to read this one so that you can actually get some ideas for different proposals thank you
Yeah, lovely, sir. Thank you. Really, it definitely helps us. Thank you, sir. So, uh, so as um, there are no no other questions from the participants, so I conclude this session. So I should thank uh, Dr. Krishna Kishorugaru for uh, giving us an uh, additional lecture on the wide or additive manufacturing. In fact, he started from the very basics to the advanced one, and even he is uh, he encouraged us to apply for the research grants on this area. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you very much for for this, and we we should appreciate your efforts as well.